today we have the pleasure of having Dan Nelson speak to us once again. And as I have put a little word about Dan here, he's a technician, teacher, researcher, who runs Avatar Computer Training here in Nelson. And today we are stuck are are now talking about various <laughs> forms of patterns and vibrations in nature and how they relate to consciousness, energy, technology, and mind, body, spirit, awareness. Oh, cool. Does that sound good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I, I could have picked any number of topics that relate to sacred geometry. And that sounds, sounds great. So yeah, you, you're stuck here with me now. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take you uh, down the rabbit hole, perhaps. Yes. And. Um, Sacred geometry is one of my favorite subjects because it actually connects to, to everything. And it connects to alchemy, it connects to quantum mechanics, it connects to astrophysics, uh, on and on and on. And cultures around the world have had these same symbols. And when I'm talking about sacred geometry, I'm talking about the, the universal patterns and the archetypes and the themes that we see uh, all around the world. Um, and when you look at nature, nature follows these forms and patterns. And it's, so it's really interesting to find out what, what are those patterns and forms. There's like a master grid, like a master grid of ratios and frequencies and shapes. And it, it, it relates to consciousness. It relates to the elements and the forces of nature. Basically, it relates to everything we see in the outside world. But then the outside world is actually a reflection of what's going on inside. So it's really neat when we study nature, we start finding all of these patterns. And all of the, these, the ancient philosophers have always come up with these patterns like Plato and uh, Aristotle and um, Archimedes, Pythagoras. So, these are ancient symbols, and one of the most amazing symbols that we see in about 40 countries around the world, there's a, there's a great list, you can look it up on YouTube, and it's the Flower of Life. So the Flower of Life, you see it embedded in stone all around the world, a lot of sacred uh, temples, ancient sites. So it's, it's one archetypal form that a lot of the forms come from. So who's heard of the Flower of Life? I'm wearing a carrying. Okay. <laughs> right. Is that so, the Yanta? What's this? Is it the Yanta? The Sri Yantra? Yeah. Well, the Sri Yantra is related. Um, so a lot of the forms come out of the flower life. I'm not an expert on the Sri Yantra, but maybe somebody here is and can share something about that. But the flower of life itself is really cool because it embeds uh, pi, it embeds the phi ratio, the golden mean spiral. Um, it's got the seed of life and the egg of life and the tree of life, all the platonic solids. So it's a really neat place to start from to see universal patterns. So I, I put together a whole bunch of slides, and I think there's 90 or something, but uh, I don't even know if we're going to get through them, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going I'm to load my slideshow here. So. Now, unfortunately, my projector isn't very bright. It's, it's quite old. I got it a long time ago. So hopefully you can see, but I'm Maybe sure you can see the if we turn this light off here, it might Okay, yeah, we don't need that light on. Or the, the kitchen light, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I call my talk Sacred Geometry and Universal Archetypes because there are different archetypes that you see also to do with deities and... Uh, all kinds of, uh, I, I call it the various forms, patterns, and vibrations in nature, how they relate to consciousness, energy technology, and mind, body, spirit awareness. So when we look at some of these sacred geometric shapes, you can see that I've actually built some out of cardboard. Like, so this is one of the five platonic solids here. So you can see uh, uh, it's got 12 sides. It's really neat, but when we ponder these shapes, it has an effect on our consciousness. And 
when we're aligned, we fit in perfectly into these ratios. So let's say that we're out of phase and we're stressed out and we're confused and we're, we don't, we're conflicted. Um, we can see that our heart is, beats out of phase and it's not in alignment. But when we clear our energy field and we go into alignment, we can even meditate on a shape. We'll notice that a shape helps, like looking at the flower of life, the crop circles. A lot of the you know crop circles, I'm sure everybody's seen crop circles, right? So when you look at crop circles, they can really help you align. And when we tune in, we'll notice that our heart starts beating in rhythm, and it starts beating in phase with some of these sacred ratios. And these sacred ratios relate to the platonic solids. So actually, you want to pass that around, everybody can take a look. Dan, yes. can you explain what a platonic solid is? Uh, well, a platonic solid, oh, well, I'm going to get to that. Um, no worries. I'll, I'll <laughs> But I'm going to try and go in sort of a linear order. I don't think it's going to work, but we can see what happens. Because <laughs> you never know what's going to what it's going to bring up. Be your first linear presentation. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never done a linear presentation. It's just ever. <laughs> no, never. It doesn't work. Um, so, what is sacred geometry? It's what we're surrounded by in the natural world. I call it a master grid of interconnectivity, because you can see how every subject relates to it. Um, and it's also right brain and left brain. All of these different shapes have a feminine and masculine form, and the feminine form is more based on circles, and the masculine form is more based on interconnected lines. Um, so it relates to mathematics, religion, um, sound and vibration. So you'll notice that uh, certain frequencies create form in dust or in sand. Certain sounds can create these shapes. And that's really interesting. And the shapes themselves create the sounds by measuring all the angles in one of the platonic solids. So, so when we think about the universe, in order to relate to it, we have to think in different dimensions. So normally we think in three dimensions um, as far as space. So up, down, left, right, forward, backward. So you can imagine these are, the, these are the three dimensions that we would normally think of in space. But according to quantum mechanics, there's 11 dimensions. Um, the particle accelerator theory shows the quarks, the way that they behave, reveals many other dimensions. Of, of And apparently there's three time dimensions, and I've heard that said in different ways, if you can imagine that. Um, if anything, it's kind of fun just to look at these uh, shapes. So you can see here, there's a feminine, the curves are more feminine, and these lines are, are more considered masculine because they're, they're you know, more direct and pointed. So that's masculine. Feminine is round and sort of spherical, kind of like the Earth. So you know, if you think the Earth is flat, that might be a more masculine uh, <laughs> way of thinking about things. But you'll notice that the sphere is, is so sacred because it's one of the most universal symbols, you suspend something in, in a vacuum, it's going to form a sphere. Um, you look at magnetic fields, and one of the most interesting things that we'll see in physics is the toroidal magnetic field that comes out of our heart, and we can see it with EEG uh, technology they have in hospitals, biophoton uh, cameras. They show that there's a toroidal field around our heart just the way there is around an atom or around our Earth, when you look at the Van Allen radiation belt or the Earth's aura. The Earth's aura is also a toroidal field. So yeah, you have a circle, but you have a torus that's like, in our DNA also, the spiral field, it eventually goes into a toroidal field. So this is one of the other sacred shapes that we'll come across a lot when we're studying different topics, is the torus. Um, and that it also embeds itself into the flower of life. So the amazing, super cool thing about sacred geometry is that everything relates to everything else so perfectly. And if it doesn't relate, then you're probably not following the grid or you're out of phase in some way. But you can see here, if you were to take just the circle and you double it, you, you, have, a, you have a form of duality. You're basically going out of oneness into duality, but in the duality is a birth, which is like the Vesica Pisces. So the Vesica Pisces in uh, a lot of, like, Jesus came out of a stargate. That's one of the uh, translations 
uh, uh, from the Bible. So that Vesca Pisces is also called like a wormhole or a stargate. Does anybody know any other names for it? Anyway, it's also called the fish. You see it in, in the Bible as a fish. Um, it comes up again and again in cultures all around the world. And then you have this. So if you were to do a third circle, you have like the Holy Trinity or like the, uh, I guess it's called the Genesis pattern. Is that the Genesis pattern? Well, it's sort of like that. But this has a lot of names as well. You'll see that all around the world. You can see that the Vesca Pisces, you see it in nebulas and galaxies. There's that shape I was talking about, the stargate of which the, uh, it's like the birth canal, right? It's the same, same mm -hmm. metaphor. Yeah. So all of these shapes are also metaphors. And we see it in human, uh, in human beings, we see it in nature, we see it in plants. So you can see here it is again. <clears throat> you see it all around the world. And now if you were to copy that circle over and over until it's repeated and you do a full circle with the circles, you have what's called the seed of life. Now a circle is 360 degrees. So that's 12 times 5. So you think of the five fingers that we have, and you think of the number 12, 12 is a very significant number. You end up with uh, 360, is that, is that how that, what, what is it? 30, 30 times 12. Th what is it? 30 times 12. 30 mm -hmm. times 12? Mm -hmm. Well that, that number, 12, uh, 60, uh, 21, 60, the 360 degrees, if you were to multiply that by the number of circles here, you end up with the number 2160 which actually, if you were to put that into a frequency, it fits into C sharp. So the other amazing thing about a lot of these shapes is that they create frequencies that create that, the circle of the musical scale, the circle of fifths that uh, was originally came up with. Who came up with the, that circle? Does anybody know? Um, one of the famous mathematicians, Plato, you know, he discovered the Platonic solids, but they're way older than Plato, of course. But it was Pythagoras. Pythagoras. So Pyth it's also called the Pythagorean uh, solids, not just the Platonic solids. In other schools, they're called Pythagorean solids because he discovered them as well. But also Pythagoras uh, took all the angles and all the Platonic solids and created a music scale based on it, which has used all around the world, which is then based on a ratio that, that fits into the number 432, or 2160. Those are the sacred numbers you'll see that relate to the size of the earth, the size of the moon, the size of the sun, the relationship between the sun and the moon. Uh, all, this, all the uh, planets in our solar system can be discovered by looking at these ratios. So uh, whether you follow me with this or not, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> Look at the shapes, it's really neat. Um, now you can see here, when you create another circles, you end up with the flower of life, and you do another set of circles around that, you end up with uh, this flower of life, or in this case they're saying it, the fruit of life comes from this, but it's the template for all material reality. So this is one of the most sacred shapes that I first talked about. Now you can see, if you were to take that first pattern, this is where you can get the tree of life as well. Anybody familiar with the tree of life? Yes. And you can see here's the tree of life, how it fits in to the flower of life. So, anything, anybody want to say something about the tree of life? It has resemblance to the Jewish uh, structure. Of what, I don't yeah, know the Kabbalistic it. tree. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, the Kabbalistic tree. So, it's interesting because there's always been this, uh, the alchemist that was trying to solve the riddle of the tree of life, or the, the, tree, the Kabbalistic tree, and, um, it's really interesting because when you look at this, oh, there it is, there's those symbols. Here it is, again. Now, solving, I think Nassim thought he, he solved did. the riddle. He didn't? Well, well maybe he did. He I mean, did. it makes sense that he did because if you take the, uh, the tree of life here and you take eight of them and put them all together, you end up with the, uh, yes. the tetragrammaton, the uh, 64 vector metrics with the vector equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So this is another sacred symbol, but really that's the masculine form of the tree of life. And in that form, 
you see all these different nodes. There's so many structures that come out of this, all the platonic solids, and I will end up getting to that, <laughs> maybe. So you can see here, this relates, there's 64 nodal points in here that relate to the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching, the King Wen sequence that we use when we do the uh, divination. Did anybody ever do the three I Ching. coins? The I Ching? You do this? Okay. So a lot of people use the I Ching as a divination system to tell them the forces that are at play in the universe and help you make decisions when when you should make certain decisions and when you shouldn't make decisions. Stuff like, like that, right? But it also relates to the 64 um, codons of the DNA. And there's, there's several other traditions that connect with this grid based on 64, very universal symbol. So here it is, uh, rotating. And an interesting <clears throat> point on that is that <clears throat> the connection to the traditions, ancient traditions, but also the connection to science and math. Mm -hmm. right? It's like yeah. we think that we just came up with the mathematics lately. Yes. And yet these perfect diagrams, which are the math, come from thousands of... Um, this is what is so beautiful, like going to the math websites, the Wikipedia articles on these shapes, a lot of mathematicians discover these they're like, look what we discovered. It's like the vector equilibrium, or whatever they call it. And then you go and see these ancient pictographs, and they're already they've already talked about these thousands of years ago. Yeah, we have buildings that are uh, dated at twelve thousand five hundred years that have these etched into them. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. a lot yeah. of those ancient buildings? sites. Well, Petra is one of them in Jordan. Uh, uh, go back to Tepe in Turkey. And uh, well, of course, Osirian, the Osirian, 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 Osirian temple. Yeah, <clears throat> and the <clears throat> the etchings are very interesting because they we would use a laser technology to laser it onto the surface of the rock. Mm -hmm. But when the rock gets chipped, the actual design goes right in true into and the true. rock. Yeah. It's, true, it's like so the flower of life. The we, we These ancient technologies yeah. managed to pull that yeah. into a stone. So how did how did they uh, how did they etch? Yeah, a flower of life into three dimensionally into a into stone. Into the stone, right? And we so don't even have that technology now. Well, no, and it was done thousands. IBM of years. says they use yeah. two lasers from different angles, and when they touch, it burns. So that's one way. But then you then inside uh, granite. <laughs> yeah, inside a granite, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. My feeling is that they cut it from another dimension, from a higher dimension. Mm -hmm. um, so you would have to be fairly advanced to start working on a different dimension because in our culture we're still thinking in more three dimensions. Like most of our consciousness is still not expanded into a fourth dimension because I believe that the, the brain um, can't handle moving into a higher dimension because you would lose your mind and I think that you have to be okay with losing your mind. But it's okay to lose your mind if you know how to be centered in your heart and the heart does operate in a field that is multi-dimensional, higher dimension. And in, in fact, in the mind culture, the second dimension of time is relating to fourth density, which is synchronicity. So when you find yourself in a very high synchronicity, you are operating on a, on a fifth dimension, on a higher dimension. And that means that your heart field is very connected, and so that your synchronicity is bringing you into that higher dimension. So that's one way of thinking about think of the higher dimension, is the synchronicity. Um, this is the egg of life. When you remove the inner circles, you end up with the egg of life. And that, of course, what does that look like? Well, it looks exactly like the embryo or the mitosis when cells split and they split again. The flower of life comes out of the, the division of cells when, when they grow in the embryo. So the embryo keeps doubling. I don't have any more pictures. But you can imagine it ends up looking like this, and that's like the zygote, is that what that's called? Mm -hmm. So the zygote comes out of the flower of life on the cellular level. And so does almost everything that comes into the, I think every, every biological form that comes in the universe comes in through this, through this shape. And that's again why it's really uh, universal. Now if you, if you take away these other circles here, you get this grid, which is called the holy archetype, it's the female version of Metatron's cube. So Metatron's cube is when you take the center of each of these circles and connect them through lines. 
Uh, now, is, is everybody familiar with this shape? Is anybody familiar with that shape? Yeah. Show of hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so half the people. So, Metatron's cube is a very profound uh, shape. Um, one, of the, one of the main shapes that you can see coming out of Metatron's cube is this, which I built out of cardboard too. It's the uh, star tetrahedron. Um, now, the star tetrahedron is a pretty neat shape because if you were to put that into a sphere, the edges line up with the two uh, ring of fires on the Earth or on the sun where all of the uh, sunspots show up on these points here, right? And same with uh, on Mars. Um, Olympus Mons, the largest uh, mountain in the solar system, is right on one of those points. So that's another, this is a, a way to describe where forces exist inside of planetary bodies. Do you want to pass that around? But that's, that comes out of the Metatron's cube, but all of the platonic solids come out of the Metatron's cube, so we're getting to the platonic solids. And you didn't bring your little ones. Oh, I did bring my little did ones. You? They're in that bag. <laughs> That will be helpful for Oh yeah, the little ones, because they're easier to pass around. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I created these little ones with these templates I just printed on the internet. So you can go on the internet and print a template like that, and do it on cardstock. You can, you can find any of these templates on the internet. Type in star tetrahedron, vector equilibrium, any of these shapes, and you'll get a template. And it tells you how to fold it, and it folds into this. Wow. Can you make a 3D printer do things like that? Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. If you have Anybody a 3D printer, um, if you build your own, it's pretty cheap. The Tech Club has a 3D printer, but you can go online and just download the DWG, the, th the 3D map, to print any of the photonic solids. But that's a that's neat. Neat idea to have a 3D printer. This is the dodecahedron. But let's see if you can name the uh, shapes. As, as we pass them over. <laughs> See, to name the shapes, you just take the number of sides, and it's Greek, right? So there's four tetra, tetrahedron. And tetrahedron, I made it red because tetrahedron relates to fire. And in fact, um, I guess it's Wemis or something. In the chemical, to describe fire, you have to have four elements. So. Anyway, this makes fire, and Plato said also this is the symbol that represents fire, as far as forces. So that's tetra, meaning four, tetrahedron. And then there's also the cube, which is called the hexahedron, because hex, six, six sides, hexahedron. And then you've also got the dodecahedron in your hand. Dodeca means 12. And then you've got the icosahedron, which is 20 sides. <laughs> Then there's, a, there's another icosahedron. How many sides does this have? Um, 20? I think it's 20. 24. Is it? Um, I don't know. I can't remember 3 times 4 is 24. That's also, that's also called the star tetrahedron. But it, the star tetrahedron is two tetrahedrons. One this shape and one that shape. So it's the male and the female coming together is what it also represents. It's 24. Be precise yeah, in your cutting. Cutting them all. Heat fuel logs and chemical reaction. You know that one. Twenty. Because you're you were you were the fire thing. You know what I'm talking about. Three times. Um, heat. What is it? Heat fuel oxygen. Heat? So yeah. heat fuel oxygen in the middle chemical reaction. That's the four elements of fire. So. Take one away, you have no fire. <laughs> now, now we want to see. Um, can you go to your pretty slides with the art about the? Pretty slides. The, the platonic solids. Oh, okay, yeah. There. So here we have the platonic solids finally, and um, the platonic solids right at the top. Well, the star tetrahedron region is not a platonic solid, but platonic solid means all of the angles are the same, all of the points touch a sphere, and all the faces are are the same have the same surface area. Uh, okay. There's other categories though that platonic solids could fit into. Now there's another uh, shape that is really common in chemistry and in physics. It, Buckminster Fuller called it the vector equilibrium. And it comes out of this uh, seed of life. But what it is is that all of the, all of the points are the same side. Um, it's, it's basically it's the most balanced. 
energetic shape that you can have in nature as far as different uh, people have determined. So, so I, it has different names. This. Uh, so someone figured out that fire is based on the tetrahedron. Yeah. Before, and needs all four to be present to, to have be fire. That's right. So the, then the thought was, so how do I, if I don't want fire, how do I extinguish fire? And you can take it away by cooling, right. by removing fuel, yeah. uh, by suffocating it so it doesn't have oxygen, yeah, or so somehow stopping the chemical reaction. So that's that's interesting. So then you can take out any of those fi uh, four elements and, and you won't have fire anymore. Right. It can't exist. That's neat. Yeah. So then, so you, if you ex extrapolate that to other shapes that have that as a basis, yeah. without any any piece of that, yeah. it's, it can't, can't exist. exist. Yeah. That's right. So all of the platonic solids relate to um, elements. So the tetrahedron is fire. The hexahedron or the cube, the, I mean, yeah, the cube is earth. And when we have the octahedron, is air, the eight-sided, and then we have the icosahedron, which is water. Dodecahedron is ether or prana or spirit or universe. What's the water one again? Uh, the water is the icosahedron. That's um. There. How many sides? It's got 20, 20 sides. Oh. Okay. So here I made a I made a black icosahedron. It's really easy to make these shapes. You just cut cardboard. Well, there's a fair bit of study around water. Dance. Yeah, and, and then when they look at it, though, it's sort of when they've looked at it, really highly magnified, isn't it? Different shapes. The crystals. Yeah. You yes. Get, so how does that work with uh, with that shape? If they're something different. See, that's something that I don't have the answer to right now. Um, how is the how is the icosahedron related to water? It could be that the angles are at sixty degrees, which is what the H two O. Maybe it's to do with that level yeah. or. Yeah. I just uh, reading some pretty new, interesting stuff about that, and they call water a chameleon. A so chameleon. The chameleon, because it can take on various shapes depending on the energy that it that it's surrounding it. Like when we bless water, it changes the structure of right. water. So. Well, they they used to say water had three states, but it's got a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, right. You know, solid, liquid, gas, but it, it could be in a plasma Energetic. state. It could actually. There's a fifth state of water. There's a TED talk about it which is the crystalline or the energetic magnitude of water and the right. ability to store memory is another property of water. Right, right. And it is the only entity on our planet that the contract expand when it freezes and contract when it thaws. That's the opposite of all of them. Yeah, there's so many properties of water. It's such an interesting It's idea. an interesting one. Yeah. My favorite. Like, where does water come from? <laughs> Outside, I heard. <laughs> right. right, well, there's so many theories on that. And I just got a, a last thought of yeah. about, okay, like homeopathy, is that, does that have a connection to water? You're talking, because it says water has a memory, and yet, like, homeopathy is um, based on imprint, energy imprint. Because it just technically doesn't exist when it's so diluted, yet that's what gives it the power. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I don't know, just I, to, I'm sure there's... According to Schaubiger, it's an entity that regenerates itself when it's spiraling like that. Yeah, and that's Rhythm. actually another theory that's coming out of the electrical universe, is that water is created through magnetic fields. So, that's, that's an interesting idea, too. Yeah. I love um, water. It's I think love. I'm not I don't, don't really understand what I'm going to ask you, but okay. and I don't even know if it's possible to even think of it. Yes. Well, what I'm wondering <laughs> is <laughs> great. That's good. Very nonlinear. <laughs> All these different shapes that are so amazing and that we're finding out has been there for thousands of years. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's possible to meditate on them without a mind, just yeah. silence, and get back to the place from whence they come, from where they mm -hmm. have their, yes. their inspiration, their gifts to us, because right. we're just looking at them, and this is interesting, and that's fascinating, and this right. is water, and this is fire, yeah. but we're not learning how to to to, um, to be with them, to, to go well, into, a, their, into them, and become, yeah. because everything that's given to us is given to us for our, us to our evolve, raise consciousness, and it seems that Rediscovering them is probably playing some part, not just how this is so, so true because we're, mm -hmm. we're now rediscovering elements that are inside of ourselves, mm -hmm. and where they all seem to connect is in the heart. 
So when we're completely centered into our hardcore, all of these shapes kind of come together. That's the way I feel about because we have all these parts, right? Yes. And they can be represented by the shapes. So in the center, for me, what I've experienced is when I've man managed to be completely centered and transcend my body and just have a spiritual awakening inside my core, I actually see a spinning Metatron's cube. And that's when I first discovered it on my own. I had that experience. There was a spinning Metatron's cube. I didn't know what it was at the time because it was a long time ago. It was crystalline shape. But that's when I had been completely balanced and it felt like, and that's what the Metatron's cube is. It's all of the shapes. So when we do ponder these shapes, we do, they are archetypal forces and parts of ourselves. So I think that help meditating on fire, there's a tetrahedron fire, hexahedron is the earth. So you, these are really good shapes, but if we ponder on those, they do relate to the chakra system as well, but I'm not sure how yet. Maybe somebody else knows the answer to that. Um, well, the other thing about these shapes is if you add all the angles, the angles add up to 720, 2160, which is a C sharp, that's an F sharp, and this is of course um, the Pythagoras, uh, that's how we came, came up to find the music scale, he's like, well that's why all these cultures around the world are using this music scale, because those notes, oh, those frequencies are so harmonic that it puts matter into a coherent state. So if you were to take a C sharp and you play it to uh, put a plate of sand, put a C sharp that's the proper C sharp, not not the adjusted one, but the the balanced one that's that fits into the master grid, and that you see shapes like a star tetrahedron comes out of a C sharp. You see it in the sand. So these are universal. The study of cymatics shows us that these harmonic numbers create coherence, and so if they create coherence on the dust, it also creates coherence in ourselves. <coughs> so these shapes, pondering on them, when I was building this, I would have dreams about sacred geometry, and it really tuned me in. It was like, wow, isn't it amazing that, it, that you could just look at a shape, and it really clears your energy just by looking at a shape, because you're meditating on it, yeah. Well, it, it's sort of, I have a theory of life <laughs> that, that's coming to mind, as, as you say, uh, balancing yourself. Right. Um, but I think in terms of, if there's something out of balance, you know, if you cut yourself yeah. or burn yourself, right, or get a then disease. there's things within our body that go, something's out of balance in that mm -hmm. body and the right cells mm -hmm. migrate to that mm -hmm. and do start to heal. And that's what happens in all our bodies. Mm -hmm. And I, when I take that scale and take it in the world at this scale that we see, yeah. that we're actually all cells responding to balance something. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, when yeah, I can see, so. probably we don't understand how all these things fit together, but at some part of us knows, in, you know, has that intelligence to be attracted to what it is we need to go to to balance ourselves and that. Same dance at a different scale. Whatever. We're a different scale. And, it, and it certainly has a, music has a part in that, shapes have a part in that, mm -hmm. and then it's just getting to that place to connect, to make everything, bring everything, everything wants to be in balance and we're drawn to that. Mm -hmm. And when we're not, yes, when we're not in balance, we're out. Then we're, that's when things start going wonky yeah, that's it. everywhere. You know, that we're resisting that pull because it's yes. not a, there's also a, yeah. it's not a demand, it's a, it's an inclination. Right. So you still have free will. Yes. Well, that's why it's so important to tune into our heart and our gut when we see information in the universe, like in the news. It's, it's so, if we get stuck in the head, it's really out of balance. It's just on the head level. But when we, have, when we take some information in, we have to see if it fits. But I, see, I think a lot of us take information in that doesn't fit. <laughs> like, who doesn't? Like in our culture, you're born into this culture, and there's so much fear. And, and so when we're still children, we're evolving out of these out-of-phase patterns and out-of-phase information that doesn't actually serve us at all. So a lot of it, all of these shapes relate to getting back into, into our harmony. <laughs> Can I add something? Um, thinking about the shapes as a tool for meditation or reflection, and you're saying that when yeah. you, like when we hold them, something changes within us, right? Like there's something mm -hmm. special that happens 
just looking at them, especially this one that Dan has mod podged all the different um, mm -hmm. sacred geometry images in the 12 colors. Mm -hmm. It reminds me also of um, like in Tibetan Buddhism and in, in Eastern traditions how they use mandalas as a, as a tool for meditation. So like in Tibetan Buddhism using the, the mandalas that are circular in the, in the center and then square on the outside with the four gates. Mm -hmm. That's also, or that you spoke earlier of the, the yantra. yantra. Yeah. yeah, it's a tool for consciousness raising and meditation. So it's kind of the same thing. This is interesting. But this is three-dimensional, yeah. which is... Yeah. Well, I, I wonder what the Sri Yantra would look like three-dimensional, but yeah, the Sri Yantra mm -hmm. is one of these shapes that's used to ponder states of consciousness mm -hmm. to purify your soul. So yeah, they do relate. How does yeah. all of that relate to chemistry? Well, well, it relates to chemistry. One way is um, all the platonic solids, all the elements in the periodic table fit into one of the platonic solids. So um, the creation of the universe comes through those gates, those platonic solid gates. So um, when we see that, I think that's why Plato figured that he, he understood that too. You could see all the elements that come out of these shapes. Is, is that what you mean by how does it relate to? Well, yeah, chemistry. You mean the elements? You, yeah, like well, as far as as far as our periodic table, and stuff comes out of those those elements. Yeah, like all the crystals that you see in nature and the rock shapes and uh, everything and all of the elements in the periodic table do fit into one of the five platonic solids. One of the interesting things. Yeah. It, it's nice not have to to not have to understand it. All. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you need to understand, understand it. To me, it's impossible. You know, to to try and it's like. Yeah. I, I'm in a river and it's flowing. Yeah. But I don't yes. need to know where it's coming. Yeah. From, you don't need to know how everything's the, working. That's right. I just need to know. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to just let go and flow. And yes. trust. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you for saying that. You know, yeah. otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it's like, I'll never get in. I'll never get in no. the street. Yeah. I'm so glad you say that. Make sure you stay floating. <laughs> That's yeah. a concern. You can, well, <laughs> yeah. And you do. We test. You know, you throw a stick and see the... And then you know, sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mona? Oh, Mona had a question. No, it's okay. I, I'm realizing... Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> and Dan, I just want to say it's, it's 12 o'clock. Yeah, that's why I well, we, we, okay. The time doesn't exist. We can't... I can't see the time. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist for me. <laughs> 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 yes, we are. Yeah, we are doing a pot run. Oh, okay. oh, we so do we have 15, we have 15 more minutes? <laughs> Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> okay. And, and I'm going to pass the uh, donations basket around to to save some time for so Dan, okay. they, Dan can keep talking and we'll. Okay. We'll I got a third of the way through this presentation, so, but that's great. That's pretty good. I heard Dan. Can keep <laughs> Just keep going. Talking. Yeah. Um, now, I want to play a video that kind of shows you how things are connected. This this guy did some research on some of these numbers and saw that they're connected to ancient cultures. So anyway, I'm going to play this video while that passes around, and I'm also going to go to the washroom while it's playing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> Do we have no, another group coming in? Oh, oh, oops. Uh, and we have another group coming in, that's why. I'm okay, going. well, oh, yeah. this we isn't the long Now let's go back for a moment and take a look at one of these numbers, 2160, the number expressed by both the cube and the germ of life pattern. You may have already noticed that without the zero, it is exactly half of our magic 432. That's worth noting, but what is even more intriguing is the way this number keeps showing up in other large-scale measurements. To discover one of these measurements, we will need to jump forward from Plato's time to when the Mayan civilization was flourishing. Roughly 1,500 years ago, Mayan stargazers were the most accomplished astronomers the world had ever known. Their concept of cyclical time led to many incredible discoveries. The accurate length of a year, the exact dates of seasonal changes, even the moments when solar and lunar eclipses would occur. But their most amazing discovery was of something known as the precession of the equinox, which makes note of a very slow wobble of Earth's axis. Somehow aware of the fact that this wobble takes 25,920 years to complete, the Mayans called this cycle one great year with each of its 12 great months requiring 2160 Earth years to complete. And what about this? Did you know that the diameter of our moon, when measured in miles, also happens to total? You guessed it, 2160. 
Lastly, watch what happens when we apply simple division to this highly synchronous number. 2160 divided by 2 is 1080, the angle sum of the octagon. By 3, 720, the total of the hexagon. By 4, 540, the pentagon. By 5, are you ready? It's the ketone of 432. And by 6, 360, the number of both the square and circle. All F sharps and C sharps with our 432A thrown into the mix as if it were some kind of clue to solving a cosmic riddle. Maybe we should look at this number even more closely. As we've stated, our closest celestial neighbor, the moon, is 2160 miles across, and 216 is exactly half of 432. What about the other large object in our sky? Were you aware that our sun is 864,000 miles across? Incredibly, where the moon's base number sequence is half of 432, the sun's number sequence is exactly twice 432. And do you know how many seconds there are in a day? 86,400, or 43,200 for the 12 hours of day, and 43,200 for the 12 hours of night. Or try this, take the 360 degrees found in the circular shape of our sun and moon, and then multiply it by the 12 hours of either day or night. The answer, 4320. It just or goes on and, on and on and on and on. What is the only whole number that when squared comes to within 0.01% accuracy to measuring the speed of light? 432. What is going on here? We have all these different things. Earth cycles, time and celestial measurements, geometry, sonic frequency, yet they are all represented by the same numbers over and over again. And they always add up to nine. nine. All the sacred yeah. numbers yeah. always add up to nine. Isn't so 432 the, the... So we're connected. Yes. Isn't that the core A chord or something? Well, yeah, it's it's the original A, the middle A uh, scale. Okay. Oh, it's the original one. The original A, yeah. I mean, it's still used all around the world, but it was uh, in the 40s, our society adopted 440. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Isn't, isn't it sort of like the, 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 the riddle of... You know, how can we all be connected and all be one and yet be individual? Mm -hmm. Like maybe a combination of that. Well, that's, that is a riddle. And yet we're all... All these separate the beings yeah. then relate to the grand. It, it, it's just a, the, uni the universal mathematics of God, if you will, that is all showing us, hey, we're all connected. That's what all of these, that's what all of these are saying. See, I'm just going to quickly go through this. I didn't get to Fibonacci or the all the phi ratio, but you see here. Next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see here all the divine proportions that we see in nature are all related related to the yeah, these the sacred stage. geometric frequencies. All the ancient art that you see in Japan, all around the world, the Mona Lisa, are all based on these ratios. I mean, obviously they were tuned in. All of the corporations, the biggest corporations in the world, all put in. <laughs> the sacred shapes, the sacred geometry. Yeah. Mm. And uh, all the ancient <laughs> sites are based on the, wow. the phi mm. ratio and the 432 frequency. Mm. Um, all the universe, the galaxies, the planets, the ferns, uh, the continents. Um, you can measure the size of the Earth with this frequency. Um, and it's been measured you know, 12 other ways, the exact size. It's, it's quite amazing. And there was a, an Indian mystic that came up with all of the planet sizes without ever needing a telescope, just based on frequencies. So this shows there's many ways. You don't need a telescope to discover the universe. You can do it inwardly through frequency. So what this is all telling us is that, yes, we're all connected. And uh, it, it goes on and on and on, and we don't need to understand it. We just need to like tune in, and we'll already feel those connected harmonies. There's this is occurring to me. You ever seen the, uh, there's, I don't know if it's on Facebook or whatever, but it showed the different shapes of different food and how they help different parts of your body. Like mm -hmm. the walnut, yeah, like when you transect the walnut, yeah, it looks like a brain, and it's pretty good brain food yes. and broccoli oh. and all of those sort of yeah, things. Yeah, it's heart food and dragon yeah, yeah. for the Again, it's what you're attracted to. Yeah, what do you need? <laughs> you well, know, that's you, I mean, if you tune into that sensitivity, <laughs> then you're, you're on your way. That's all you need that's to know. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Yeah, that's all you need to know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be mental, it can be just intuitive. So thank, thank you so much guys. We're going to go to the next